Okay. Still growing. Can yes. you hit the record button so the people that cannot make it, they can also wish it, watch it after? It looks like Shobit is recording. That is, is that correct. correct. Yep, we are recording. Yeah, Shobit is recording. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, record it and um, if uh, time permits, you edit a bit down and then, uh, or, or I doubt that, but who knows. And then we're going to post it on the, um, on the YouTubes, so I will obviously post a link on the uh, blog site where that is when that comes out. So if you guys follow Twitter and or the blog, uh, Twitter's probably the easiest place. Um, we'll, as soon as we get that processed, it should be this weekend. I don't want to promise for anybody else, but it's we're planning on doing it this weekend and having it up. Um, probably Monday, but I wish we could see the cities where everybody was in. That would be awesome. Well, you got at least one person from back in Michigan here. Welcome, Michigan. Jay Marcello here. Let me ask before we mute everybody. Does anyone yes, want to course. comment? Who's uh, who's interested in seeing Rhino inside Revit? Yay. I think we're all here, right? Probably <laughs> everyone. Yeah. yeah any, any, expectations, like uh, any comments around that area? Well, it's we'll have comments problem. after we hear. So I think it, we're getting ready. I'm just really John, John Algio with the hooray. Yeah. I got you. We got Rowan from Detroit. Cool. Um, yeah, sorry about if anybody's getting choppy connections uh, with the audio. That's why we're kind of having everybody mute and we're not using our cameras. It's also noontime in the world and everybody's using the internet. And from what I'm hearing, um, you know, people are overloading the damn thing. We don't have 5G all over yet. And um, so. Unfortunately, we're, the uh, choppiness of any audio is out of our control. We apologize, but again, we will be recording it. So if you miss any of Marcelo's awesome presentation, you'll be able to catch those parts. Cool. Um, thanks for the comment, uh, Shiva, regarding um, not being able to join these due to school. And um, it's awesome that you and everybody else can join remotely. And like I said, we'll we'll start doing these um, regularly. And with that, we got 58. The joining seems to have slowed down. So let's run with that. What do we say? I'll take that for a big muted. Yeah, let's go. Let's, let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's do it. Right on. Yeah, perfect. Oh, go ahead. Was there a final comment there? Uh, no, I was just saying that uh, it's totally fine to go on for me. Thanks. Awesome. Great. Thank you. So I, um, if anybody has not seen this image before, this is an actual real, a true light image. This is from a camera. Uh, the body of the uh, planet Saturn there that you see that looks kind of weird is obscured behind a, uh, a kind of circular lens there in the middle because the planet is uh, in eclipse. The reason I, I bring this up is because there's a, um, a tiny little dot out here. I believe it's that one right there on the left side of the screen. And um, that's our Earth. So in thinking of how to start a meeting and what to say during the age of coronavirus. I know that's not the pronunciation, I'm trying to keep a light heart here. Um, but in this age where it, it's pretty serious, all I could think of saying is, other than obviously everybody hopefully is staying safe and doing what we can to keep the this thing under control, 
to some degree or to whatever degree we can. But I also wanted to just kind of give a little inspiration for, for, um, for our place in everything, you know, how vast nature and everything really is and to really give us maybe a, a second of a different perspective because I think understanding that we're on the little little ball in the middle of a bunch of other little balls in these ex just incredible vast distances um we are both individuals but we are all really i think it's not just more alienated by that idea but more recalibrated more brought together and what's well, acceptable that's my intention here so hopefully we all are getting through this the best we can and uh, damn it everybody stop hoarding toilet paper you're not going to shit that much <laughs> that said um we yeah. do want to know what's inside of revit and we also want to know what is all about with rhino inside of revit and i don't know about you but i'm very looking forward to the next presenter uh, or our only presenter today again like i said everybody we will have time for questions at the end welcome susanna suzanne sorry um so we will have question time at the end so please uh Jot down your questions, we'll give some time, and Marcelo will spend some time at the end and whoever else needs to to answer the questions or comments. So if you don't know who he is, go use the internet and find out. Um, he's one of the most um, awesome people in our um, community that has been presenting throughout the years. We love to have him here. He's really passionate. So Marcelo, um once showbit switches the screens you can take control and have a great presentation and we'll see everybody and during the question time okay am i up yep am you're I? up uh, you, it's your nice turn turnout holy smokes all right uh yeah should i turn on my am i gonna mess yeah, everything up if i turn on my camera and say hi yeah you, you can turn on your camera hello everybody all righty hello hello okay can't hear you but uh there we go all right hello, hello everyone okay let's talk uh can everyone see my screen not yet just your face just my face oh now we can see your screen okay I believe us it was disturbing all right hello hello all righty let's uh let's do it okay um all right so i got about what 45 minutes jay that's, that's correct right. sir yeah you got 45 minutes to uh and then we can open it up for questions okay okay let's do it rhino inside well <laughs> Look at the image there. What do you see? You see a rhino inside of Revit. Uh, this technology is relatively new. Um, I will go over exactly what it is um, from a practical level, what it really means, what it really means to me, uh, and so on. Um, I thought I'd get cute, so I actually modeled a rhino inside of Revit uh, to, you know, usher in the occasion. So that's a rhino built entirely inside of Revit inside of Revit. Uh, McNeil is the company that makes Rhino, um, the Rhino software out of Seattle. I actually showed them this model. Uh, they definitely got a kick out of it. Okay, so I had the title Rhino inside Revit, but I thought what better way to show the title than with a picture. So that's Rhino inside of Revit. Okay, later on I'll show you how to actually get that model. Uh, okay, so thank you Jay for the introduction. I'm Marcelo. Uh, speak all around the well all around the world um, but we're all kind of virtual now so um, uh, make presentations all the time try to push software to its limits that's all about me I run a blog site and a podcast uh, there's also a comic there a YouTube channel called simply complex dot uh, org go check it out email and Twitter okay let's do it uh, I do want to show you uh, we do have let me see here if I can get this thing going Okay, 
Yeah, that's the that's simplycomplex.org. Go check it out. Okay. Uh, I have a book coming up. I thought I'd mention it now. Dynamo Reference Manual will be out in about three weeks. Um, you can go to the website there. It'll give you some more information. One page summaries, about 200 pages. Go check it out soon. Okay. What is Rhino inside Revit? <laughs> what is Rhino inside? What is Rhino inside? What is Rhino inside Revit? Um, okay. Let's talk about it. There was a presentation I was supposed to make, but I couldn't make it. The San Francisco uh, Computational User Group. So Asan, uh, who does the Pi Revit package, now works for McNeil slash Rhino team, decided to do the presentation in my absence. Did a great job. You can check it out um, on their YouTube channel. Uh, in that presentation, they go over um, Rhino Inside and Rhino Inside Compute, which is more of a web-based one. But in that one, they go over the whole what's happening in the background. I won't go over that at all. I'll go over what's going on in the foreground, but I do encourage you to check that out. Um, great group over there, San Francisco Computational Design Institute, they call it. Check it out. You can just Google them and you can get the uh, the video on YouTube. They did a great job. And again, it goes over all the back end, what's happening in the background. I won't go over that. I'm going to talk about what you see in the front um, and kind of talk it at a more practical level. And we're definitely going to do some awesome examples. Okay, so what is Rhino inside? Oh boy, what is Rhino inside? Um, just because I don't want to make sure there's any confusion, I want to talk about nomenclature for just a little bit. Can I see these? Uh... And by the way, if we have questions, let's type them in there. Are we getting them yet? No, but don't be bashful. Type them right in there. Um, I'll start. Uh, yeah, again, uh, any big questions, if anything comes up, we'll, we'll note it and bring it up at the right time. Outside okay. of that, let's try to keep the questions to the end. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I started it out, Jay, right there. All right. Um, so what? <laughs> well, are we supposed to answer what is Rhino inside? Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to answer that. What is Rhino inside? Okay. Good question. Yeah. Good question. What is Rhino inside? Okay. Rhino inside is a brand new concept to our AEC industry. It's believe it or not, it is extremely revolutionary. What does it mean? Well, if Rhino inside runs inside of Revit, then we call it Rhino inside Revit. Um, so uh, just so we can get some nomenclature, um, I'm getting, I got, I'm running a few monitors here, so I just gotta make sure you see it. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go over this menu in just a little bit, but Rhino inside Revit runs, Rhino inside runs inside of Revit. Okay, so whenever you run Rhino, you open Revit, and you open Rhino inside Revit, that is called Rhino inside Revit. You open, uh, what's nice is uh, Rhino now comes with all of its full functionality with all of its geometry kernel as well as Grasshopper. So if you run Grasshopper, if you open Revit and you run Grasshopper from Revit, you are running Grasshopper inside Revit. I'm saying that because of what we know and love up until this point, I imagine there's quite a few Rhino and Grasshopper users out there. What you have done in the past up until uh, most recently is everything outside of Revit. So if you if you have opened Rhino outside of Revit, I'm going to refer, I, it's not commonly referred to it this way, but I'm gonna refer to it this way as Rhino outside. If you have run Rhino and Grasshopper outside of Revit, then I'm gonna refer to that as Grasshopper outside, okay? So I'm gonna be throwing Rhino inside, Rhino outside. Is that clear to everyone? Rhino inside is an add in run through Revit is Rhino inside. You run it outside of Revit, mean you just click the icon outside of Revit, then it is Rhino outside. Okay, so what does that mean? They are really the same thing. Uh, just one runs inside Revit, one runs outside of Revit. Uh, um, okay, and to uh, a common question I get is, well, can Rhino inside open Rhino outside? Absolutely, it's the same file format, everything in every single way. Uh, it's identical in every single way. I'm sure there, there's there's uh, the developers would say, no, that's not true. But anyway, uh, it's true for the most part. Rhino outside will open Rhino inside. Grasshopper inside will run open Grasshopper outside and then and so on. OK, and just like how Rhino and Grasshopper outside talk to each other, Rhino inside and Rhino and Rhino inside Grasshopper inside talk to each other <sighs> and Rhino outside can open Grasshopper inside inside to outside, outside to inside, inside, in all every which way in between. We good with that? Okay, there's a question about memory and so on. Uh, we'll go over that later, but is this paint a clear picture? They can all interact with each other in every single way. Okay. Um, 
I'm glad we're clear on that. <laughs> so I'm going to say outside, inside, inside, outside. Uh, okay. So how do you get started? Uh, let me just go over that really quick because you're like, well, what am I going to do? Um, how do I get started? And I think this is extremely important. I've heard presentations all the time. And it's like, this is awesome. Could do this, do that, this, this. But you're like, what is, how, does that, how does that pertain to me? We'll talk about some practical examples. And then how, how do I even get started? <laughs> okay, this is how you get started. Um, uh, by the way, I'm doing one-page summaries. If anyone's familiar with my Dynamo, I'm doing one-page summaries for Dynamo. I'm doing one-page summaries for uh, Revit and Grasshopper. They're going to be green. We'll see where that takes us. Um, but this is the great getting started page. Um, basically, all you do is you kick, uh, let's see here. You kick, okay. You kick over to the website. Uh, you can see it up the top there. Or you can Google it, Rhino Inside. Okay, what you're going to do here, let me explain it really quick, is you will get this Rhino WIP, okay? That is also the Rhino version 7 beta as of right now. An official release is Rhino version 6. If you have a Rhino version 6 license, you can get Rhino version 7 beta slash WIP. WIP stands for work in progress. Okay, you can get that for free. If you have only a version 6, li uh, 5 license, you cannot get Rhino version 7 beta. You must have a Rhino version six license and then you can get it so everything i'm talking about today is in beta i'm putting that in quotes if you can still see my image um but eventually it'll be under official release but it's under beta and you can go get it right now well don't do it right now listen listen in but uh you can get it um <laughs> everybody it turn off <laughs> go to me <laughs> go get it right now please go get it right now <laughs> excuse me listen listen to uh listen to what i have to say and then you can get it later okay so that clears that up um, you'll need that. Download that. It is a separate standalone. You that will give you two things. It'll give you. Um, it won't give you two things. Okay, let's talk about this one next. Uh, this is the Rhino Inside Revit add-on. Okay, so first get this uh, Rhino uh, WIP. Install it. Then get these Rhino Inside add-in. Okay, and then once you get that, it'll give you two versions. It'll give you Rhino Outside WIP. Rhino inside WIP. Okay. Ah, it'll also give you Grasshopper outside WIP and Grasshopper inside WIP. Okay, good. Aren't you glad I explained what outside and inside was? All right, very good. Okay. Um, then you um, you can fire up Revit. I'll show you an example, uh, and then you get this awesome menu, and I will walk you through it. Let's do it because I am all about doing examples. I have to open Revit on my other machine for a second here. Um, I could mention I uh, Rhino inside Revit works on versions Revit 2018 through 2020 point X. Um, someone could correct me if it's any earlier than that, but I've verified it works on at least those versions. Uh, will it work on 2021 Revit 2021? I don't know. Someone could probably chime in on that when it gets released. Uh, Jay, when are we expecting the release of Revit 2021? We're not allowed to say, thank you. But we're it not looks allowed like, to say. Um, okay, coming soon. Can we yeah, say that? Yeah, we're going to be having a presentation. It's sometime uh, mid to late April, it looks like. I Great. can't talk about what that meeting is going to be about or the actual date. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Jay, for that. For that sort of message um okay so let's talk about how rhino inside looks inside of revit um here is a corinthian column project uh, that i built a little while ago uh, that is actually inside of revit but anyway you could have built that in rhino all right so this is how it works check it out so you go to add-ins and then you click on this rhino button under add-ins uh you do if you do if you do collect your license through the zoo server uh, then you will need to be uh, linked into that however you grab your licenses. So you couldn't be offline and then click this because the moment you click this, it's going to look for your Rhino version 6 license. Is that clear to everybody? Okay, good. I can't get 670 thumbs up, but I did click it. It is clicked and it is uh, it is in process here. Okay, so it's... It's all, there we go. Okay, 
So the moment you click this as the add-in, then it kicks up another menu called Rhinoceros, and then you get this beautiful suite of buttons. Super awesome, fun stuff. I'll explain each one really quick. Okay, by the way, I should mention this. These sample here that are that come with the, uh, these are examples on, on, anyway, there are a few examples. They're really not that helpful if you try to hit this cold. So I don't recommend as a first time user to start playing with these samples because they're very confusing. All right, so. Anyone guess what this does? I wish I could hear your voices. <laughs> you click on this and it opens Rhino. Yeah, it opens Rhino inside. Okay, there it is, Rhino inside. Now, it doesn't say Rhino inside here, although I hear they're working on it, but that should say Rhino inside. It should, but it doesn't at the moment, but it should. Okay, so that's that's one. Okay, um, next is, um, you do have a Python window you can work with. I won't go over that. Next is Grasshopper, okay? This is Grasshopper inside. You click that, you get Grasshopper inside. Here's what's super awesome, cool, and amazing, okay? You don't have to open, so mm, let's back up. For Rhino outside, I do have Rhino outside, um, and I'll open it over here. I'm opening up Rhino outside at the moment, okay? And I'll kick it over here. This is Rhino outside. <laughs> it looks just like Rhino inside, doesn't it? Uh, I hear whispers that they're going to put the word outside here or something else to know that it's Rhino outside, not Rhino inside. Okay, Rhino outside. The only way to get to Grasshopper was to actually open Rhino and open Grasshopper. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, what is super cool and amazing now, so here's Grasshopper. What's super cool and amazing now with the new Rhino inside technology is you don't have to open Rhino to get to Grasshopper. You can just open Grasshopper, okay? Why is that super cool and amazing? Because if you have scripts um, that interact with the Revit database and have nothing to do with Rhino, then you don't have to open Rhino or a user doesn't have to open Rhino. In fact, they don't even need to know how to use Rhino, okay? Uh, what's technically happening in the background is it's opening a headless version of Rhino, although you would never see it and you don't really care. Okay, so that's that. Um, all right, and then there's just some, there's actually this one, which is Grasshopper Player, which would be a lot of fun. Uh, anyone familiar with Dynamo Player does the same thing. You can click on this and it'll run a Grasshopper um, definition for you without even having to open Grasshopper. Okay, those are the basics. Other than these few actually show you, um, you can actually display um, Grasshopper previews inside of Revit, which is kind of cool. We'll go over that in just a little bit. Already? Okay, cool. We're doing awesome on time. So uh, let's kick back to our presentation. All right, so we went over this. We went over how to get started, right? Rhino inside, get your WIP, get whatever you need. Probably your company is going to be setting this up for you. And I explained what all this was. Okay. All right, so uh, let me. I'm not going to go over um, Grasshopper and what it does uh, because a lot of people are familiar with it. Um, what what is happening now, okay, with Rhino inside and Grasshopper inside is Grasshopper now has a series of it has a Revit tab here now, and in that Revit tab has um, many 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 functionality that interacts with the Revit database. So what we're looking at now is Grasshopper for Revit. That's what this is. Now it is not as robust as Dynamo for Revit, meaning there's not as much functionality. However, there is quite a bit, and I'll explain why that's important, because if you wanna move geometry between Revit to Rhino or Rhino to Revit, um, you would be using Grasshopper and you would be using this Revit tab, okay? Also notice I opened up Grasshopper Inside. That should say Grasshopper Inside, but it doesn't, but it should. Hopefully one day it will. Um, all of your favorite add-ins that you have or your components or packages or whatever you want to call them um, that were with your Grasshopper Outside are available to your Grasshopper Inside. So you see I have Human UI, I have Kangaroo, I have, and, then, and then Revit is only specific to Grasshopper 
inside. If I were to open Rhino outside, Grasshopper outside, I would not see a Revit tab. Does that make sense to everybody? I would imagine if I looked out in the audience, I'd see a bunch of heads nodding. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to assume that's clear to everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so human UI, we got lunchbox. Oh, we got this one. I'm working on my own package, which is this simplex package inside of inside of Grasshopper. Okay. All right. So um, how are we doing there? Good, good, good. Okay. You know what I can do is let me show you. I'll show you some of these examples. Okay. So let's see. Let's see how it works. I'm going to see if I can get rid of this Corinthian here. Hide it. Okay. So I'm going to show you some of these principles, how they work, and then we'll actually go over some awesome examples. Okay. So we were back at Grasshopper. Here we are. I have a simplex package. Okay. So right now um, I have a, my simplex package actually, um, if you drop this down, you can actually create a, a moose. Okay. Why? Why not? Right. Okay. So this is a Dynamo Moose. Now, if I go, I can open up Rhino. Close that window. Um, now you can see the actual, um, the Moose is being displayed actually inside of Revit. Do you see that? Okay, so what's happening here is just based on Grasshopper geometry right here, it is displaying the Moose geometry inside of Revit. So traditionally with Rhino outside and Grasshopper outside, Grasshopper outside geometry is previewed in Rhino outside. Yeah. Well, with Rhino inside and Grasshopper inside, Grasshopper geometry is previewed in Revit, in the Revit background. Okay. Now you certainly, if you don't like that, you can turn it off or you can leave it on. That's totally up to you. Uh, and then you're asking, well, what about Rhino? If you open Rhino, then um, it also is previewing it in Rhino. Yeah. So if you don't ever use Rhino in this particular case, let's say you wanted to take this moose and you wanted to uh, bring it into Revit, and I'll explain how to do that later, you would never need to deal with Rhino inside. But you certainly could, and it does traditionally all the same things, right? Okay. Um, and then you could, I could even bake this in to, to Rhino and then it would turn into, um, it would turn into Rhino geometry. Yeah. Okay. I could turn off the preview and there is the Rhino geometry, right? There's the moose. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Rhino and Grasshopper, Rhino inside, Grasshopper inside work together, have that same relationship. Okay, cool. So I just wanted to show you how to kind of, how that geometry relationship is working. Okay. All right, um, so let me close some windows here because I don't want to have any issues crashing. Uh, so I got a lot of windows open. There we go. Okay, so here we're back here. All right. Hold on a second. Let me manage my windows here. Okay, let me get it. <laughs> um, window management, by the way, is uh, still a work in progress just because you've got a lot going on all right so um i'm going to close revit let me just close revit here hang on a second i think i have i i've got an active window here give me a second jumping up there we go okay i think i was in an i was in an active um command inside of rhino with the shade that's why it didn't want to close on me that's, that's what was going on there okay so clear with the relationship all right pretty cool all right so let's go ahead and uh kick back to the presentation and then i'll show you i'll show you some practical examples of how this is important okay so uh i wasn't going to go over um i wasn't going to go over uh, grasshopper um, although if you're a dynamo user grasshopper uh, there's a lot of similarities um, 
and I made some two side-by-side -side slides. So that's a grasshopper point, that's a dynamo point. Why would you wanna put a grasshopper, why would you wanna make a grasshopper point? Well, you can build grasshopper geometry and then you can host Revit elements onto those grasshopper points, just like you would do with, with dynamo, it's very similar. Um, and then that's how you would do a, a surface. That's how you'd put a point on a surface. Okay, I won't go over this anymore other than there's, you can draw some similarities between Rhino inside Revit, Grasshopper inside Revit, uh, and Dynamo. Marcelo, let me interrupt with the question since I'm uh, yeah. that kind of person. You there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, um, the big question, it, it's awesome, the what? about you know, what is Rhino inside of Revit. The, the bigger why, is there anything that one can do in Rhino and Grasshopper that one could not do with an equal skill level in Dynamo and Revit without Rhino and Grasshopper? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, the answer is-, is Any real like, wow, it, Revit just will not do X, Y, Z, so we need this, or is it just, hey, look, we can do it? It's a good question. Um, I don't know if it's a, if it's a, hey, look, we could do it. Um, it's a matter of, of, of preference. Um, so for example, so for example, we're going to go over this example, but uh, good question, Jay, right? What's the point? What's the point? Um, so I kind of showed you the relationships on how that works. Now the question is, what, what, okay, so what? Yeah, so what? So what, Rhino runs inside of Revit, Grasshopper runs inside of Revit, so what? So what? Okay, well, yeah, so what, quite honestly? If, if you could accomplish everything you wanted to in your company in terms of making freeform geometry um, and being able to rationalize it and, and document it only using Revit and Dynamo, then you're good to go. If you are in a situation where you're a firm or an individual who likes and prefers to model geometry in Rhino, yet you need to get it into Revit somehow, then this is the solution for you. So um, with that said, I'm not, I used to be the individual who said, do everything in Revit because you can do anything you want in Revit. Well, some people prefer to do their modeling in Rhino or their early modeling in Rhino or their schematic modeling in Rhino, fine. And then what do you do at that point? Do you remodel it inside of Revit or could you use this new Rhino inside Revit technology and help move that geometry from Rhino to Revit? And then if it changes down the road, move it back from Revit to Rhino. Or if you build everything in Revit, then later you want to be able to uh, rationalize it. You could use the Rhino tools. What 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 McNeil said, and it was very clever, was they said, you know what? Um, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Why don't we make an add-in that transfers Revit, Rhino to Revit, because a lot of people uh, struggle with this. Rhino to Revit. We'll make a little add-in that will transfer the files, quote unquote, right? Um, then they said, well, what if we start adding some of the geometry and some of the functionality? Well, they're like, why don't we add all of Rhino and all of Grasshopper functionality inside of Revit, right? And that's what they ended up doing. So it's the entire Revit and the entire Grasshopper program inside of Revit. That's the concept. And that's what's revolutionary here is that it's the entire program as an add-in to Revit. Okay. There are some add-ins that you can use like, uh, you could write your own add-in that would, uh, I don't know, change all your bubble colors to a different color or, or maybe a different size or whatever. Or you could buy a, a bigger program like like, um, like Unify that helps manage your content, your Revit content, right? Or you could, this one, which is an add-in to Revit that has all of Revit, all of Rhino and all of Grasshopper's functionality. So uh, it's a matter of preference of, of what you wanna do. Um, I'm just showing you that uh, everybody here that uh, this is kind of a new technology and it gives you that extra ability to tap and use the Rhino geometry and the Rhino geometry kernel and Grasshopper's functionality and Grasshopper's geometry to help um, you know further what kind of workflow that you may may have um, may have in your office basically um, so that's that's kind of that.
with that said. Does that help answer your question? That kind of well, it, gets... it, yeah, it did answer a little bit. I'm just wondering because I've seen some geometry that was generated in Rhino, and you know, very twisty, and um, and the Rhino geometry was so unusable that, however, one could get it into Revit, it wasn't useful. So again, the big why is, I think, just a sticking point in my mind. So you can move oh, okay, on. okay, well. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay. I mean, fair enough. You know, it's a, it's a matter, like I said, it's a matter of preference. You know, if you if you would like to to model this this topography surface, these roads, that pad inside of Rhino, and you're that kind of person, model it in Rhino, and then bring it into Revit. If you're the kind of person that is more comfortable modeling that in Revit, um, the pad, the roads, the topography, model it in Revit. If you're more, if you're an individual or a company that is more comfortable with modeling the topography in Revit, but all the curved roads and pads in Rhino, and you only want to bring over that portion, then then uh, you know have at it. It's all it's all kind of it's all kind of personal preference or company workflow that you want to be able to do it. But the thing is, there are many solutions right now that I, I better comment on this. There are many solutions right now out there that can take rhino geometry into revit one we kind of use all the time is a is an unintelligent sat import right you can do that that's one way to do it uh, there are other ones ways to do it there's mantis shrimp um you know there's a bunch of other ones that can do it what is unique about and I'm, there's nothing wrong with those what is unique about rhino inside revit is it is the entire revit program inside of revit the entire Rhino program that's inside of Revit, and it was developed and built by McNeil, which is the Rhino people. So I have found this workflow, meaning using Rhino inside Revit as a way to transfer geometry back and forth between Revit and Rhino and Rhino and Revit, a much more stable methodology. Um, so that's that's just my my comment there. Although there are other solutions, I'm putting that in quotes. Uh, okay, so let's just kind of see how it works uh, with the next 15 minutes. What do you say? um Woo okay here we go so let's go revit to rhino and then we'll go rhino to revit is it i have a, <laughs> okay i am i'm gonna get a lot of questions is it better than mantis shrimp is it better than conveyor is it better than this is it better than that i will completely leave that to everybody to decide for yourselves all i have to say is i'm very happy with the stability and the reliability of rhino inside revit and i'm going to leave it at that um, okay, so let's see how, let's see if we could do this. Let's take a Revit file and let's move it to Rhino and then we'll go Rhino to Revit. What do you say? In this case, we'll take the, the Revit Rhino and we'll move it to Rhino. Okay, so here's the one page summary. I'll show you how you do it. Uh, pretty simple. Okay, I'm going to get Rhino, I'm going to get Revit back up. Oh, I already had it up. Yikes. And I'm trying to open up another one. That's not good. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see if I can open up. Uh, that's the family. Give me a second to navigate there. Okay, wait a second. While you're doing that, there's a, a question from uh, Ryan Keenan uh, who asked um, about when uh, Revit accepts yeah. these Rhino elements as uh, native Revit, how does it impact the model? Does it slow things down? When Rhino accepts, when Revit accepts the Rhino models, does it slow it down? Is that the question? When you get the geometry from Rhino into Revit and then it's a native Revit thing at that point. Yeah. Does Not that even, have oh, any the question impact is like a lot of other uh, Rhino no. geometry does in Revit where it brutally slows it down? um i would okay the question was on performance um i personally have not found any performance issues um so for example let's look at this guy this okay but i mean i'm gonna say i haven't tested every single case in every example in every project right so um of the things i have observed i haven't noticed any i'm putting in quotes noticeable difference in performance okay look at this this is a rhino inside of Revit, right? This was built out of native Revit elements. Okay, so this performance here, 
um, I have noticed to be identical if I built this inside of Revit or if I built it inside of Rhino and brought it into Revit. That's my answer for that. Okay, so let's try to bring this into Rhino. What do you say? Let's do it. Want to do it? Let's do it. Okay, here we go. So what do we do first? We got to go to Rhino, our Rhino um, tab, and we already activated it. Okay. Now what we need to do is we're going to use Grasshopper as the um, conduit to get this geometry from Revit into Rhino. Okay, so I'm going to click on Grasshopper. I'll delete this node. Okay. I'm going to go to the Revit tab. Now, what I need to do is I need to select these surfaces out of Revit and I need to turn them to Grasshopper geometry. Why do I do that? So then I can bake the Grasshopper geometry into Rhino. That's the workflow, right? You convert the Revit geometry into Grasshopper geometry, Grasshopper geometry to Rhino geometry. Okay. And it's relatively simple. All right, so let's do it. So what we need to do, what, what is this? I have two windows open. Holy smokes. Hang on a second. Get rid of that. Okay, so what we do is we got Grasshopper here. Here we go, Grasshopper. Okay, so um, what we need to do is we need to, we need to select out of Revit. So if we're selecting out of Revit using Grasshopper, then what we need to do is we need to go to the Revit tab, okay? And then um, from the Revit tab, um, we need to select the Revit faces of that Rhino. There's also a solid selection, but I'm gonna just select the faces. So you could double click and say face, um, and then it says represents a Revit face. Okay, so this is what we're gonna use to select the faces inside of Revit. So I right click, I'm gonna say set multiple faces. Um, and then you can see now we're inside the Revit environment. I'm just gonna window all these. And then I'm gonna say finish. This is actually a Revit dialog to say finish. Now it knows that it has stored all of those um, Revit faces inside of Grasshopper. So that's all it did is it just selected it. It hasn't done anything else other than just select the Revit faces. They are still Revit faces. We need to now convert them to grasshopper geometry okay so just like in here it's called geometry and the the node okay so you go back to grasshopper and then i can say uh, geometry oops sorry not that one <laughs> sorry it's this one okay let's go back Okay, it's called geometry. It's under the um, it's under the Revit tab. Under here, I believe it's under. Let's see, under selection, under document, maybe. Mm -hmm. I have to search for it. Let's see. Element geometry. Get the geometry of the specific element. Is that it? Okay, that's it. All righty. Uh, it's a little different. They added this LOD one, but that's okay. All right, so there we go. That should do it. Why not is it working? Element. Did not work. What's going on? What did I do wrong? Did you select more than faces? No. Nah. Mm, ran 19 times, one error. What's the error? Failed, found one and only one. Okay, let's see, let's let's see, let's open Revit. Let's open Revit, let's open Rhino. Let's see what's going on with Rhino here. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, hmm, I mu oh, I know. I must have selected the points, that's probably why. And it's mad that the points are in there. It's probably what's going on. Told ya. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I quite like what's going on here, Jay. So I'm gonna delete the moose. Um, there we go. Okay, here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the Revit Rhino as grasshopper geometry previewed inside of Rhino. So um, now what you could do is you could turn off the preview. Yeah, and then you can, um, you could bake it in. So let's just hit bake and that should do it. 
There we go. Okay, there it is. All right, there it is. Okay, here we go. So um, why? I think it's also previewing this one. Yeah, that's why. Okay, there we are. There it is. Look at that. Hey, there it is. Okay. So that is how you get, that's how you get Revit geometry to Rhino. Right. Why would you do that? I mean, I, I'll leave that up to you. I, I know some Indu, I know some companies that actually take Revit geometry, bring it into Rhino so they can rationalize their panels and do the unrolling and all that sort of stuff, uh, and then bring it back into Revit for manufacturing, that sort of thing. Um, so I'll leave that up to you. But okay, how clear is that? Two nodes, boom, boom. Yeah, probably should uh, probably should look into this a bit more. But anyway, that's the way you do it. Um, e easy peasy, maybe. Let's get out of that active command. Okay, so that's it. One page summary, boom, boom. Okay, select the faces, geometry, boom, you're done. All right, so let's talk about the other way. Let's talk about with the next, uh, what, 10 minutes we got? Let's talk about how do we go from Rhino to Revit because that's what most people are interested in, right? You build your geometry inside of, that probably should be a little bigger. You build your geometry inside of Rhino. How do you get it into Revit? Well, you can't just right click and say bake. Yeah, if I saw the audience, you'd be nodding your heads. You can't just, you can't just right click and say bake. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up another example here. I'm going to open up a Revit. That's the final one. I'm going to, hold on a minute. Let me delete that. Okay, so I have a blank Revit file. Okay, now I'm going to go to Rhino and open Rhino. Okay, and then I'm going to open up an existing Rhino file. Okay, so let's go to here. Let's check this out. Okay, that's actually the... Uh, what's going on here? Are you doing that, Marcella? Just let me drop in a quick comment. Uh, Cody ahead, Winchester. I need to close down. I need to close everything down. Marcella? Yep, I'm listening to you. Go ahead. Cool. Uh, Cody Winchester uh, made a comment. I just want to bring it up real quickly. He said um, he agrees Rhino inside is a superior um, transfer method, at least what's available today. But for people out there listening to this, um, understand there are still differences between Rhino and Revit that persist and um, suggesting that it still requires careful workflow and process forethought and management. Um, it's not just something where, oh, hey, the Rhino geometry will be just as cool and light and small necessarily in um, Rhino so or in Revit. So do understand that it, there, we still want to make sure is this something that we you know really need to do or is it just a preference? And those are going to be firm wide and team wide choices. But, you know, word to the wise people, just because one can doesn't mean one uh, needs to. So. Um, some things may work really well. Some things may not. Thank you, Jay. Good point. Uh, yes, definitely. This is not going to solve all your answers and um, convert all your geometry seamlessly 100% every single time for every single project, every single workflow. It's not going to answer every single RFI. And it's not going to eliminate every single change order, and it's and and so on. So, <laughs> you're going to need to make sure that you just uh, understand this technology and try it for yourself. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> Thank you uh, for whoever made that comment. Um, okay, <clears throat> so let's say that you used Rhino outside and you built um, this geometry right here, uh, which is uh, basically uh, a a surface that would represent topography built out of nerve surfaces as well as roads and parking lots, curved roads and building pad. Let's say that was all built inside of Rhino outside, okay? Nothing to do with Rhino inside, Rhino outside. So you open up a new version of Revit or a company project, whatever, I imagine you have a company template, uh, and then you open up Rhino inside. Okay, let's go ahead and open up Let's open up that project that was done in Rhino. Uh, let's see here. Now I know why I was getting all confused because um, I was opening up a grasshopper model. 
that's why I was all turned around. There we go. Uh, okay. Um, there's a um, there's a there's an issue here with units um, because it it depends on what Rhino outside and or Rhino inside what units it was built in and what your Revit template or your Revit project is in. So just be, I'm gonna say just be careful about that. That's all I'm gonna say about it because I could go on and on about it. All right. So we're looking at a Rhino model built in Rhino outside, opened in Rhino inside. Okay. So this is a this is a surface that was built right um, out of made out of uh, lofts and then these are just some uh, poly surfaces that represent you know this this topography okay all right so I'm going to show you um, just the last few minutes that we have left I cannot just go into Revit and open up Grasshopper now by the way I mentioned this too if you open up Revit And then you open up Rhino inside. You could get to Rhino out uh, Grasshopper. In, you open your, you open Revit. You open Rhino inside. You can open Rhino, a Grasshopper inside this way, or you can open Grasshopper inside from Rhino inside. Okay, just if I click that, it'd be same thing. Okay. All right. So let me go ahead and mention this now um, from here. So I cannot just go to Grasshopper and right click and say bake, okay? There are basically one, two, three, four. There's basically four ways to get geometry from Rhino into Revit. And why is it so complicated? I don't know if I'd call it complicated, but but uh, it's not as simple as just baking, although you could use that term, right? So if you brought this into Revit, this particular surface, how would you want to bring it in? What category is it going to go into? What family is it part of? Do you want it to be an unintelligent SAT blob or do you want to actually it to be a native topography element? So I'm going to give you this example and just kind of leave it here. There are many ways to do it. All right. Um, and so I'm going to show you if you were to actually um, open Grasshopper and then I made some definitions here or some scripts to show you each of the different ones. So let me just show you that really quick here. Okay, so the question is, there's many ways to do it. Okay, so first of all, let's look at this one first. Okay, this is kind of the backwards version of what we did earlier. Basically, you select the breps inside of Rhino. Okay, and this is the pad up here. You select the breps inside of Rhino, and it'll just bring in a the the actual element inside of Revit. Now, let's see how that works, okay? So if you just use this by brep node, it's actually gonna represent itself this way inside of Revit, okay? Now I have a preview on, so it's gonna, now this is inside of Revit, so I have the preview on, so I'm gonna turn that off, just so we, we kinda are not all confused here, okay? So this is it right here, okay? So this is gonna come in as a generic model, and that's it, nothing else. There's no other data with it, okay? So that's if you were just to use this element. Okay, I'm gonna run through these rather quickly because I know we don't have a lot of time. Okay, the next is the roads. What you can do is um, with the roads, you can use, not you have to, but just another example to bring geometry in slash bake is you can select all the breps and you can actually assign it a category by this by geometry node. Okay, a by geometry node is a little more intelligent than the by brep, only because you're allowed to, to give it a category, give it a name, but it's really the same thing as by brep, other than it's just gonna give it a category. So that would be some of the roads I brought in that way, okay? So that would be this road, okay? It looks actually the same in every way, but you could actually use the road category if you wanted to, okay? Um, it's actually in here. You just select this and you could you could make the, uh, I don't know where it's at in here. Let's see, will it show up for me? Am I gonna roll all the way down? Okay, I'll roll all the way down. Right. Well, you could, being that it's an alphabetical list, yeah, you kind of got to roll all the way down. Okay, but I could use this one, and it might actually mean something now. Roads, and then and that then would actually assign it as a road category. Roads is meaningful in Revit. Ah, well, that's that's kind of sad and happy at the same time, I suppose. Um, the next way to bring it in, number three, a more complicated way, is you could actually, and I use this for the large pad, is you could actually take you can select all the breps, that's this one, you see there, 
you can assign it a category. Yes, I'm just using generic models as the category. And and uh, by the way, I may recommend you use generic models as the category. And if you want to switch it later, then you can try it. But I found generic models to be kind of the my go-to when I'm just trying stuff out. Um, okay, what it does is it'll actually build um, a a new family, and you can assign it a template right here, or it'll use a default one. Okay. And it'll actually create the family itself. It'll actually create the family and load it into your project, the family type. Then you can use another node to actually place it. So this places it at 000. So let's look how that works inside of Revit. Let's see if it did it. Let's see here. Uh, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's Rhino. That's not Revit. Here we go. Yeah, look here. See? So it actually made it as a separate family. And I called it my surface. And you could actually edit the family. Okay, so what that's happens another way to do it. Edit family. That's another way you can do it. That is another way to quote unquote bake geometry from Revit Rhino into Revit. Okay, how how you want to do it, which elements? I'm going to leave that up to you, the the group, the audience. Okay, and then the most sophisticated way I'm going to call it um, is basically if you want to actually rebuild the geometry, meaning um, this particular surface, I took that one as the example. Meaning, what do I mean by rebuild? I mean, actually to have Rhino, a grasshopper take the Rhino geometry and rebuild it as a native Revit element. So in this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm taking, I better close that family. I'm taking the, I'm taking, look how cool this is. This is actually the topography, but it is not an SAT. It is not a family that's imported. It is not a, it is not a um, direct shape that's set by category on topography. It is actually topography. So what this particular node does, and you could use other ones, like if you wanted to rebuild structural beams or walls, or I don't know, whatever. This one just happens to take the breadth and then it divides the surface accordingly, grabs the points, and then it rebuilds, which is this one, native Revit geometry. And so you end up with the actual topography, and then you can edit the surface. So this is actually a native Revit element, okay? So um, that's kind of what I wanted to say about that. So those are the four methods, right? One, two, three, four. There are more, but I just thought I'd mention it's just not, you can't just right click, say big, big, right? So it is a little more, a little more complicated. Okay, I have a few more minutes and then we'll close it out. Um, <clears throat> okay, a few more things. So uh, to mention is that um, some more side by side just with Dynamo and Revit. Um, so if you wanted to explore more of Grasshopper and not just its functionality to go from Revit to Rhino, Rhino to Revit, I say Grasshopper, I should say Grasshopper inside. Um, it does have other, nodes that attach to the Revit database where you can actually just create a forget about Rhino just using Grasshopper for Revit um, you have the ability to select um, structural elements you have the ability to build particular families just like you would with Dynamo um, you have the ability to query and toggle information just like you would with with Dynamo uh, of course like I said it's not as robust as Dynamo although it does have some of the functionality and in my opinion I get this question all the time what about Dynamo? Dynamo will always be here. This is just this is just um, a Grasshopper inside that touches um, that touches the Revit database, so that it gives you some functionality. But um, I, I anyway, uh, okay. And then uh, here's some more examples. You can build structural framing and so on, right? Using using Grasshopper and or Dynamo. Um, okay. So uh, I think Jay, are you still there? Uh, let me close out with, i uh, got two more slides, okay? And then uh, we can open questions. Um, yeah, I'm just like so with I'm, everybody just, else. We're over here listening to you, having, uh, you know, dirty thoughts. Okay, having a good time. Okay, um, by the way, so what I'm doing is I'm building equivalent, uh, right now I'm building equivalent Grasshopper inside Revit, um, kind of cheat sheets, and, and hopefully I can build up enough so maybe maybe one day I can have a, a Rhino inside Revit manual. I'm, I'm still kind of working on that and kind of thinking about what that would what that would sort of look like, So so stay tuned for that. Um, okay, and then um, everyone saw the Corinthian column, and then everyone saw the um, the, uh, the 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 <laughs> the moose. 
everyone saw the uh everyone saw the uh the rhino the rabbit rhino right um so uh because all these things um uh unify uh, which is a content management system was gracious enough to host all my content so if you want all these families you can get them uh, if you're a unify user uh, if not i guess it starts next week if not go to this you are and you can get a uh, you can get a demo and if you get a demo you get all the content too so that's a little secret um, so anyway they're, they're setting this up for me and it so actually you're not has... going to share it with us explicitly oh no because these things are all over the place so this is where you get it right here so look here this is all the families i ever built all right there for you to pick up look there's there's even the elephant for the first time public release right there okay whatever you want all here okay so go check it out right on. Um, okay thank you by the way if you uh if you need to contact me do it um i offer training so does uh titan aec um so thanks for thanks for thanks jay for letting me uh let me do this presentation are there yeah, questions thanks for presenting. And thanks to everybody else for uh showing up we really appreciate it so um while you're closing all that down um it. yep there are a couple questions here that were uh, written in, and um, a couple of them seem to answer. One about um, imported Rhino geometry and the ability to specify the types. Um, he's wondering if you know how much this kind of serves the process. I think we saw the answer to that question uh, live, but um, there is one where well, does this at all, and again, I think it gets back to the performance issue or consideration, um, does having, let's see, the um, Rhino generated content in Revit becomes native Revit content. Does having that and also just Rhino stuff imported still impact uh, the models in a negative way? Wow, you're still on the performance, huh? Um, it's the biggest thing. It's there's two things that I'm looking for. I'm looking for Rhino uh, nerve geometry is only surface nerves, and the translation has traditionally killed the performance by over triangulation, and also not everybody using Rhino knows. Excuse my language, everybody knows what the fuck they're doing. And they create geometry that is unbuildable, and they have to re re rebuild it to rationalize it into maybe real curves, not splines and such. But they don't know it because they're just making pretty shapes, and they're making these models that a either can't have the geometry uh, uh, applied or hosted to them or transferred from Rhino to Revit, and then we have these models that either don't work, they don't work very fast you know a click of the mouse takes 10 minutes and then you have half and half geometry that's revit and half it's not is that still an issue well okay let's i think what we're getting hung up on here is that the geometry that comes into revit is just triangulated garbage that is not the case anymore just like i was showing here um can you still see my screen because i thought i paused sharing can you see it again yeah, we, we're still seeing it. Okay. What what tradition, not what traditionally, but what, what I think a common thing and what's holding people up is that the Rhino geometry that comes into Revit is either unintelligent SAT blobs or or triangulated surfaces that that are um, that you cannot work with. From what I just explained on the four methods of bringing it in, it will turn it into native Revit geometry. And in that regard, you will eliminate the all the what I'm putting in quote unquote garbage that that comes in because you have the ability to filter it and recreate it as native Revit elements. So basically what I'm trying to get at is is leading down a, a path to the answer to the final question by uh, Mark Owen. Thank you, Mark, for the question. Um, where he said, so you could have some of your geometry as Revit native and more complex geometry can display side by side. And that would be uh, from the comment, the, the Rhino geometry. And before you get to it, Marcelo, I would just suggest, Mark, no, 
the complex geometry. Well, I would just ask and, and really kind of push back on the idea. Why do we think in 2020 that we can get more complex geometry out of Rhino that we can out of Revit? It is not the case. Now, there may be learning curves that I'm not speaking to, but um, again, I have a real issue with mixed hybrid geometry if there is no quote unquote need, if it's just a desire or a, well, we don't know how to use Revit that well. Um, so that's my two cents. Marcelo, maybe you have a different opinion. No, I don't. My only opinion is if you feel more comfortable modeling in Revit, model your geometry in Revit. If you're more comfortable modeling your geometry in Rhino, model your geometry in Rhino. Um, although I don't, there's nothing that I, that I have experienced in my career that couldn't be modeled inside of Revit. Um, I take that, you know, I, but you know, anyway, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at that. What are the questions you got before we call it quits here? What are the files? Uh, no, I, the files, when the models get, um, yeah, no, uh, Ryan, yeah, regarding the generic models, Marcelo was just looking at using generic models as a, just why not? Um, yeah, obviously one would want to pick the correct category um, for file organization. But the question uh, that is uh, interesting also is, um, what are those family, the, the uh, Rhino inside Revit files? Are they saved as uh, RFAs? The Rhino inside, the Rhino inside Revit files are saved as RFAs. Yes. Cool. The Rhino, the Grasshopper inside Revit files are saved as Grasshopper files, Grasshopper outside files. Yes. Hey Jay, we got a question here, so um, I'm gonna unmute someone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey Mark, the the floor is yours. Yes, hello. We hear you, Mark. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I wasn't asking about uh, basically having a hybrid model where you have a mix, um, you know, Revit geometry and Rhino geometry. What I'm saying is some people may or may not be more comfortable modeling stuff on the fly in Rhino. Um, sure, you've proven you can build Rhinos and whatever you want to build, you can build on Revit, sure. But some people are not more comfortable. Maybe we'll never be more comfortable. We can do it quicker, feel more fluid, or for whatever purpose they want to model this um, on-the-fly stuff in Rhino. And then you just you just showed you can obviously get it into uh, into um, Revit using your four methods. Um, but will that Rhino geometry display um, in Revit before you go through one of those four four methods? The question is, will that Rhino geometry display before you go through one of those four methods? Yes, it will. Um, it actually will show up in the preview. So I actually turned the preview off. But uh, if you look here, if I turn off, let's pretend we didn't do any of this and I hide it. Um, in the, you actually allowed to turn on the preview inside okay, of Revit. So that's what you see there. That's basically whatever you're building in, whatever you're building in. Uh, Rhino inside shows up as a preview, um, and then whenever you want to so so-called bake it, you use one of those four methods to get it to populate Revit, uh, Revit geometry from your Rhino Rhino massings or surfaces or whatever you made it with. In yes, in in yes, correct. Uh, and, and and those four methods aren't the only methods, but those are the four I chose sure. to show today. But yes, that you're yes, that's correct. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, I know there's a lot of questions about this. I think the best thing you do is kind of try it out because they're like, what about this? What about that? It is a new concept, really is. But uh, I just wanted to kind of hopefully give you a more practical example and and uh, give you kind of uh, what do you want to call it? Ease the 
ease the tension behind it because it's really not that complicated um, at all. It well, looks be. very simple and it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, clear leaps in the right direction. Um, it just, it's, it's um, again, I think everybody might have figured out my opinion right now. It's like, if there is, becomes no difference modeling in one or the other, look, uh, you know, I paint and, and ultimately I could buy hundred dollar paint brushes. I could buy $20 paint brushes and it's really not about the cost of the paintbrush. It's about how that paintbrush is used. And I think with this as well, my opinion is the more one can have the geometry natively created, I, they're in one package, there's just gonna be less issues. And if, if, modelers, if a modeler is good and modeling clean and properly, Ultimately, it really doesn't matter what software because something like this works it. My whole issue comes down when people are using a software because, well, that's my preference. It's easier to use. I'm really comfortable with it. All that says to me is I've shut down my brain. I don't want to learn anything new. I can do what I can figure I can do in this software. So screw all the others, even though there may be a better solution out there. That's my only point. All right. You, you've been heard, Jay. <laughs> Any other questions? I will take that as a comment. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so there's a couple of questions uh, that just kind of came in uh, off yep. the side. Is um, There was another question about performance uh, between Grasshopper performance and Dynamo performance with uh, complex no network computation so i think that kind of goes back into the performance issues if you want to go ahead and talk about that since you have a lot of experience in both node node network computation are we talking about the difference between grasshopper inside and dynamo yeah i think that is the direction of the uh okay you know the 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 focus of this talk i could comment on that on another time but the focus of this talk is not to discuss Dynamo, um, it's to discuss Grasshopper inside. Um, we could we could go all day long about Dynamo performances versus Grasshopper performance, Grasshopper inside performances, and Grasshopper inside versus what it Give does and what minute. Dynamo does. Give so I, I'm minute. not gonna I'm not gonna come. I'm I'm gonna challenge anyone who wants to 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 run those comparisons, compare it to themselves for themselves. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't. Yeah, I think. I, I, am a, I am a heavy Dynamo user. I am a heavy Grasshopper user, heavy Rhino user, and I'm a heavy Revit user. So, uh, you know, I leave it at that for me to figure out. That's, that's what I'm going to say. And there's another question, too. Um, there's some curiosity about Honeybee and some of the add-ins that you can utilize with uh, Grasshopper. Um, will those uh, also work with, with Rhino inside? And grasshopper inside. Uh, that's a very good question, and the answer is absolutely, absolutely will work. Uh, if we open up, if I open up Grasshopper inside, you can see I do have some of the cl not classic, but I do have some of my Grasshopper outside add-ins already here, like Human UI, Kangaroo, Human Lunchbox, and then of then my package Simplex. So the answer is yes, they will work. Have I tried all the packages? No, but I haven't found any issues of the ones that I've been using on a common, you know, like on a you know, common between Grasshopper outside and Grasshopper inside. Does that answer your question? Uh, Claude, that would be up to Claudia. <laughs> that, answers oh, yeah. your question. I, that probably should answer your question. Thank and then you, you may be wondering, uh, I mean, this gets a little bit in the weeds, but you might be wondering, um, is are they pointing to the same location um and the answer is yes they should the 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 add-ins that are in grasshopper inside point to the same location as they are for the grasshopper outside i'm just going to say by default you may have some other situations but for the most part that they, they point to the same place so the first time you open grasshopper inside should fire up all your add-ins uh, i won't get into any more detail about that but for the most part it works yeah awesome well i i want to uh thank you marcelo for putting you're very welcome thank you for having me 
We love it. And um, it seemed pretty uh, successful. We had uh, upwards of uh, 70, almost 80 people, I think, at one point. And um, to the 48 who are holding on now, 47. <laughs> Um, thank everybody very much for showing up. Uh, stay safe out there. Um, follow whatever health guidelines are uh, around, you know, um, wrap yourself with saran wrap and, I don't know, dangle from the ceiling. It seems to keep uh, us away from people. Uh, but definitely stay safe wherever you are around the world um, and check back into our blog and the Twitter world and all that. We will uh, be posting the video, like I said, as soon as it's uh, finished processing, uh, we will get it up there and uh, I will probably write a blog post with maybe a couple of the questions that were put in here and um, some of the uh, background or, you know, information like that. But again, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to Titan AEC and Showbit and Blaine and Mario for hooking us up. Showbit, great idea to do this. and. Uh, Looks like we'll be seeing you uh, next month remotely again. Whether we'll be live, I doubt it's still here in LA. We'll probably still be shut down, but uh, we'll definitely do it online. So thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you next month. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jay. I'm just sitting here listening to all of the people closing down. It's awesome. <laughs> kind of like Pac-Man, slowly but surely. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's mesmerizing. I don't want to leave. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Simone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Have a Thanks good day. Everybody. I'm going to end it. Yeah, end it now, Shobit. Thanks again. Ciao.